the year was 1953 and the leader of the Soviet Union, Joseph Stalin, had been inside his room for the last 24 hours. The servants outside were feeling scared, but no one dared to go inside and check if the leader was safe. Finally, a new servant gathered courage, went inside to see that the leader was laying. He had wet himself. The leader was still breathing, but he was in a very bad shape. His most loyal servants and his best officers were by his side, but none of them dared to call the doctor because they were scared. The what if the leader wakes up and becomes furious because of this, Stalin died in that year in 1953. Let us talk about Stalin's counterpart, Adolf Hitler. In 1944, when the Allied powers had landed on the coast of French territory, which was occupied by Germans at that time, Operation Overlord was launched in the wee hours of morning. And even when the top commanders in Hitler's army knew that the Allied powers were making inroads, they were not able to send in the tanks because they needed Hitler's explicit permission. Hitler was sleeping and none of them dared to wake him up. And by the time he woke up, the Allied had secured all beachheads and were making their inroads in France. Now, why am I talking to you about all of this? It's because it's not just in war, but as the industrial age came about, we saw this form of autocratic leadership not just for dictators, but also in organizations. Henry Ford was famously quoted saying, where can I find another pair of hands with no brain? He had the ideas, he had the factory set up in place, he just needed people to stop thinking and do as they're told. The challenge, however, is that this is not the industrial age, this is the information age. Leaders are working with knowledge workers. However, their leadership style still mimics that of the industrial age where they are coaching their teams not on how they think, but how they work. And so the autocratic style of leadership, the Stalin or the Hitler or the Henry Ford kind of leadership may not completely work in the workplace today. But let us look at the exact opposite. If not the autocratic style of leadership, will the democratic style of leadership work? Well, my recent coaching engagement was with a part of a consulting firm who was too democratic. He told me that most of his team did not listen to him and tried to do what they thought was best. While he appreciated it and he had tried to make that culture, sometimes things went out of hand, deadlines were delayed, and they were not able to bring the kind of product that they wanted together. And so the democratic style of leadership, while having its own advantages, it allows people to think, may also have its disadvantages. So on one side is autocratic style of leadership. On the other hand, we have democratic style of leadership. None of them seem to be working. And so what are we supposed to do as leaders? And here is what I recommend. Imagine the styles of leadership, autocratic and democratic, not as mutually exclusive styles, but rather as two sides of a barbell. So let us say you are trying to do a bench press. You have the bar in between. You put the weights on the side and you're pushing the bench press. Now in the barbell, if you keep your hands too close to each other on the bar, you will not be able to balance and the weights will start wiggling here and there. And that's what happens when you try to create a fine balance between autocratic and democratic leadership is that your team will not be able to understand what kind of a leader are you. And if you are holding the barbell very close to the weights, your movement will be restricted because you yourself will not be able to balance about the fact that, all right, in what cases am I supposed to use autocratic leadership and in what other cases will I use democratic leadership? And just like a barbell where you're doing the chest press, you need to have that balance wherein you hold the bar on those exact positions which will allow you to do those push-ups with full range. So that means somewhere on the bar of autocratic leadership and democratic leadership, where do you position yourself as a representation to your team and to yourself that you can lead your team in a better fashion? The purpose of this video was for you to get into your awareness what kind of a leader are you and what kind of a balance are you trying to maintain between democratic and autocratic leadership. 
in further videos in this series i will address what are the actions that you can take specifically to maintain that balance in a more effective manner what did you learn from this video let me know in the comment section below what is the question that you have for me let me know as well i will see you in the next video on our series the influential leader